decision making. When I walk in that prison today, the justice system, such as it is, will have done a crippling blow to the constitutional separation of powers and executive privilege. The day has come. Peter Navarro is finally reporting to federal prison, but not before lashing out. Every person who has taken me on this road to that prison is a friggin' Democrat and a Trump hater. Welcome into TYT Overruled. I am your host, Adrian Lawrence. Let's talk about some facts here. I am the first senior White House advisor in the history of our republic that has ever been charged with this alleged crime. And I say alleged because for hundreds of years, uh, this has not been a crime. And for 50 years, the Department of Justice has maintained the principle of absolute testimony immunity. Last I checked, contempt of Congress has been a crime for quite some time now. But former White House advisor Peter Navarro would disagree. The first Trump administration official to be sentenced in connection with the efforts to overturn the 2020 presidential election spent his final moments of freedom giving a lecture on con law. And it was only with my case that somehow uh, that has changed. And here's, here's where the homework is, because the big constitutional separation of powers um, are these. Can Congress compel a senior White House advisor, what they call the alter ego of a president, to testify before Congress? And, and executive privilege goes back to George Washington and his remarks to the uh, Congress regarding the Jay Treaty. And he said very simply and clearly, succinctly, elegantly, that to write to the Congress, he said, I cannot command you, as members of Congress, to come to me. You cannot. Navarro was so off the rails that Fox News hit him with a fact check. Right, and he will be reporting to that prison uh, 2 p.m. Eastern time there in Miami to serve his four-month prison sentence. He began by saying, not about me. Um, he said this is about a crippling blow to the justice system. To fact check there, it is no longer an alleged crime that he'll be serving this four-month sentence for. Uh, he has obviously been convicted, and there was no evidence that, did, um, that would have excluded him um, per executive privilege from testifying. So John Roberts just on um, Monday refused to delay his prison time. I can guess why Fox News didn't try to fact check this defensive rant from Navarro today. There were more FBI informants up on Capitol Hill that day, possibly instigating that crowd, than the FBI itself could keep track of. There were stories about that. Um, why did Nancy Pelosi not provide more Capitol Hill police? Why did Mark Esper, the Secretary of Defense, have the National Guard so far away? And as for the destruction of evidence, sir, look, the things they are doing you know, Hillary Clinton, like, <laughs> cleansing her, e I mean, there's so many things these Democrats have done that would actually justify prison, you juxtapose that with me, all I've done is my duty, all I have done is my duty to this country, the Constitution, my commander-in-chief. As entertaining as it is to know that Navarro will face four months of federal consequences, former GOP Representative Joe Walsh makes a keen observation as to how Trump will leverage this moment. One of the things that we've seen time and again, people who work for Donald Trump getting themselves in illegal hot water, sometimes going to prison. Your thoughts on seeing Peter Navarro reporting to prison today? I mean, that of all the headlines, I mean, that's that's no small thing. That should be a huge headline, yeah. but there's so much. There's so much to yeah. work for Trump is to lie for Trump and to commit crimes for Trump. But Jim, Trump will use this. And what Mark said is so true. We cannot discount this. Donald Trump wants there to be violence. He wanted there to be violence on January 6th. He will spend this entire campaign. He'll use Navarro going to prison as an excuse to foment violence. Navarro likely knows that Trump is going to come to his defense, which is why he made sure to give the former president some love when he was at the mic before surrendering to authorities. I've had the greatest amount of support from Donald Trump and his team, and uh, he, he uh, 
um, he under, look, they can put me in prison. They can put you in prison. Make no mistake about that. And make no mistake about this. They are coming after Donald Trump with the same tactics, tools, and strategies they used to put me over there today, okay? Think about this. Stripped of all defenses before a jury trial. That's going to happen to him. Democrats in all the jurisdictions he's in. Fannie Willis in Atlanta. The guy uh, in, in, in Manhattan, uh, Bragg. It, and then, of course, Jack Smith at the Department um, of, of Injustice, as we like to call it on my side of the fence. So um, I'm pissed. That's what I'm feeling right now. But I'm also afraid of only one thing. I'm afraid for this country because this, what they're doing, should have a chilling effect on every American, regardless of their party. If they come for me, they can come for you. So how do you think this is going to shake out for Navarro? Will spending four months in the pen have him changing his tune as to his allegiance to Trump? You let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Hit those like and follow buttons. And thanks for watching.